Finally, we talk about what you need to create an actual practical implementation of your path tracer. The key idea is to separate direct and indirect light. This is often also called next event estimation. You already know how to sample direct light. You sample the area light source and you integrate over it. But the simple vanilla path tracing that you've done so far is very inefficient. The chance of actually hitting the light by extending paths from the eye is very small. So simply separate the direct and indirect, estimate the next event corresponding to the light source for direct, and focus the energies on the hard part in path tracing, which is computing the indirect light or the global illumination. This is the simplest of the variance reduction methods. Recall that Monte Carlo path tracing always works and is the gold standard for rendering, but the challenge really is to make it fast and remove the noise or the variance. Formally, we want to split the incident light at a point. If you look at the equation here, I have split it into the direct light at a point and the indirect light at a point. The reflected light now has three components really the emission, the direct component, and the indirect component. Earlier, the direct and the indirect component were all rolled into a single integral. The emission is easy. We can simply add the emission term here when we encounter a light source. We already know the direct component. You've already sampled over the light source with geometry and visibility terms and the area. And so really all we need to do is evaluate the indirect lighting by path tracing. Here is the evaluation of the indirect. Instead of considering the general reflected light here, I have limited the integral to the indirect component, which corresponds to this L out term in my estimator. Notice that L out above is actually given by the direct plus the indirect, but does not include the emission. So this is one trick that we have to put in here to avoid double counting and multiply counting the emission. The implementation is actually quite straightforward. At each intersection in the path tracer, you execute the direct lighting. For simplicity, you only send one unstratified ray for each area light. This will get summed up when you have multiple paths through the pixel and therefore will remove the noise in direct lighting. A fancier approach would be to stratify the first bounds or completely separate direct and indirect, but this is an easy approach that you can do. Add in the emission where appropriate that applies only to light sources. So you will be adding the emission component to the direct component. And then you will execute the indirect lighting above where you randomly sample a path. To avoid double counting, the indirect rays will not include emission. Therefore, if an indirect ray ever strikes a light source, actually it terminates immediately without accumulating the light source's emission. This is a very simple algorithm you can implement in your path tracing, and simply by separating direct and indirect, you will get a significant performance improvement. Again, some corner cases you need to consider. So emission from the first intersected surface, that is, if you hit the light source directly, it should be added. But on subsequent bounces, you don't add in the emission because you're already considering direct light or emission from the light sources. Furthermore, since next event estimation or direct lighting effectively extends the path by a bounce, you trace the indirect ray only to depth d minus 1. You will now re-render your Cornell box scene with one sample per pixel or 64 samples per pixel with d equal to 5. 
and at each intersection point you shoot a single unstratified direct light sample. One can see here you're shooting a ray. At this point you shoot one sample to the light source. The ray may come here, you shoot another sample to the light source. If the ray comes here, you shoot a sample to the light source. If it goes here, you shoot another sample to the light source. So at each bounce, you will get the direct sample from the light source. Here is a one sample per pixel image without next event estimation that we showed earlier. And simply putting in next event estimation allows a better estimation of the direct lighting and you get something which is now a noticeable Cornell box. 64 samples without next event estimation in fact looks noisier than one sample with next event estimation. I'll just flip between them a couple of times. But if I put in 64 samples with next event estimation, you can see that I'm now beginning to reduce the noise and I'm trying to get the soft shadows, the color bleeding, the interreflections, the reflections, the highlights, and all of these begin to show up. Finally, it is unsatisfying to set this depth d is equal to 5 manually, and in fact, it leads to bias in the Monte Carlo algorithm because you are excluding higher depth or higher bound spots. Furthermore, you will continue the ray even when the throughput is small and maybe you could benefit when you had terminated it. And then there is also a challenge of whether your program actually terminates. In practice, your rays will terminate ultimately even for high D because they will exit the scene. But in a hall of mirrors, it can become challenging. Russian roulette is a technique which is unbiased and allows you to set d is equal to infinity at infinite depth, enables you to get rid of rays or paths that have low contributions. So without Russian roulette, you'll just have a ray like this. With Russian roulette, the path will either terminate or it will be continued and the energy will be boosted to enable an unbiased result. You terminate a path with some probability q. With some probability 1 minus q, you let the path continue. If terminated, obviously the throughput is zero. If left alive, you multiply or boost by 1 over 1 minus q, which is essentially 1 over the probability that the path is allowed to continue. This enables you to create fewer high energy paths. So for example, if Q is equal to 0.1, out of 10 paths, you will have nine paths, each of which has its energy boosted about 11%. If instead Q is equal to 0.9, you will actually kill off nine of the paths and the one remaining path will have its energy boosted by a factor of 10. As I showed in the previous lecture, this keeps the total energy constant and is unbiased, and you can work that out mathematically. The probability Q essentially controls how aggressive the termination is, which depends on the throughput, and note that if you are too aggressive in termination, you can actually end up increasing variance. Here is one example. You have five parts with Q is equal to 0 0.2. So you can make it one part, four parts term are expected to terminate and the survivor is boosted. Here, in this case, four parts are expected to continue and only one path is expected to terminate. In the assignment, we request you to choose this probability in using the formula shown here. You consider the max of the throughput in all the color channels and you say Q is equal to one minus min of this comma 1. Russian roulette should be applied only for the indirect path. You determine the direct lighting and the emission on the first bounce as usual. There is no boosting or termination applied to that. 
Then you find throughput for the ray so far, which includes the BRDF, the cosine, and the two pi terms at each bounce. The formula is given in the assignment. You pick a random number from 0 to 1. If the number is less than Q, then you terminate. No indirect ray is shot. Otherwise, you boost the throughput by 1 over 1 minus Q. You shoot the indirect ray and you continue. Here are images with Russian roulette. The differences are actually quite subtle, but you can notice in the right image, for example, in the reflection of the ball in the small cube, that you are losing some of the variance and the image is somewhat smoother. Beyond that, the image on the right is actually unbiased because it enables you to set d is equal to infinity.